Ok, da kan jeg starte. Jeg heter Ivar Kjellmo, kommer fra, eller jeg foreleser på Vesterdals Oslo Act i 3D-grafikk. Og denne her talken her skal ta dere igjennom hvordan dere designer 3D-grafikk for mobil. Da skal vi bruke, vi skal ende opp på en Google Cardboard. Kjenner dere til den? Ja. Jeg har noen sånne Google Cardboard som dere kan få etterpå. Foredraget er vel litt, jeg vil si at man bør ha kanskje litt kjennskap til 3D-grafikk fra før, at man har jobbet litt med det. Så er det noen her som sitter her som har jobbet litt med det før? Ja, ja, noen, ja. De som ikke har gjort det før, vi kan se på og vil få masse gode tips, så det er bare å følge med her. Ok. Er det greit at jeg tar det i norsk, eller vil dere ha det på engelsk? Engelsk. Ok, skal jeg ta på engelsk? Ok. Så, obviously my slides will be in Norwegian, but I will do the talking in English then. Ok. Ok, so I will just start with some background, small background things. What is virtual reality really, and what you call it, and what you say about it? Well, it's really difficult to get a clear definition, but you will call it like artificial reality, synthetic reality, computer-generated reality, those kind of things when you talk about it. But what it is about is most often it's about real-time 3D graphics uh, and the movement inside real-time real 3D graphics. So it differs not much from a computer game. But... Um, it's, ob it's obviously of that uh, it's about to move around in 3D graphics in some how. Uh, the concept is not uh, new. It has existed for extremely long, actually. Uh, we, we know it maybe first uh, through William Gibson Euromancer, where you talk about a virtual room called the Matrix, which they also took up in the Matrix movies. But uh, actually, it's before that, um, you talk about virtual reality in Anton Artaud's uh, writing about the theater. So uh, entering the theater uh, was described as entering a virtual reality, and that is in the 30s. Uh, later on, you have uh, really like uh, early, uh, early uh, tests with um, like stereographic uh, movies uh, where you use a cave, and a cave is a room where you project in, the, in 3D, or in the stereo, you project through all walls, and you use uh, glasses to get the stereo effect, and you can move into this space. And that's from the 50s. And up in time, you will have different, uh, also like highlights where you can talk about virtual reality, but uh, in the, especially in the 80s, the movie industry takes it up and you will, you will find uh, virtual reality and ideas about virtual reality in, in Hollywood movies. And uh, maybe you are familiar with a, with a film, uh, The Lone Mover Man. Uh, it's an old, uh, uh, old uh, quite crazy film where, um, where uh, they enter the uh, virtual reality space. Uh, yeah. Among uh, many things, it's very, very uh, famous for a 3D sex scene. It's really crazy. Okay. Uh, what about uh, virtual reality? You, you also know it by this uh, the head-mounted displays. Very often, people use some kind of headgear to 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 view the view the virtual reality experience, and uh, yeah, with goggles or helmets and such things. Uh, and we, as we know it now, it's uh, through Oculus Rift that so many of them around there, so, so people can test. Uh, so we have some uh, some. Uh, Okay, so when you use a um, head-mounted display, it's also a stereo image. So you split the screen, so you get this stereo effect together with the 3D graphics. So this headgear looks uh, from time to time, uh, from the, the hype from the 90s, you can see some of these headgears uh, with uh, more or less intelligent uh, uh, appearance. So you. Okay, the uh, concept of stereo, uh, as I said, uh, when you're doing uh, virtual reality things for uh, head-mounted displays, it will also be in stereo. And by stereo, I mean 
you will project an image uh, slight with a slightly different angle to one, uh, one image to one eye and one to the other eye, and then you get this stereo effect as you know in movies. This is also very old, as you can see of this picture. This is, uh, they, they would do that in the late 1880s, and uh, it's a lot of uh, stereo images uh, with uh, like ethnographic stereo images with uh, uh, in Indian uh, uh, like uh, tribes and uh, and also from Norway actually with the Lapish people. You can see like from the 1880s like stereo images of Lapish families and such things. Okay, and uh, then you will uh, take uh, the same picture from a slightly different angle with two cameras and we'll use uh, a kind of gear like this, which will, as you can see here, is the stereo image mounted in, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, like uh, old uh, like, uh, binoculars. And you will separate this picture from in this eye and this picture in this eye, and you will get this uh, depth effect. Exactly the same, uh, exact the same um, uh, principles is uh, around with a, with a Google Cardboard. But you just m mount your, uh, you use the screen of your telephone with a split image in stereo uh, and 3D graphics. Uh, and as well, have you tried the Google Cardboard? Yes, you, you use the gyro in the, you use the gyro in the, in the telephone to make the movement so you can look around in your, in your world. Okay, so this, obviously, when it comes to uh, like definitions and such things, uh, we would call this like, we would call it stereo 3D graphics actually, so. Okay. Okay. So the workflow when you are going to make this, uh, it's uh, possibly uh, uh, different uh, ways to do it. But uh, in this uh, talk here, I will show you um, the workflow. I will take you through these steps here, and I will just talk a little bit about them, and I will take you through these steps and show you it in in the softwares I use for doing this. Uh, and uh, as a start, you will you you need a 3D software package, and it will be like. In my example, I use 3D Studio Max, but you could also use Maya, you could use Blender, you could use uh, Modo, any kind of modeling and texturing software. Uh, in a, in a, you would basically do uh, most of the design in the 3D software with modeling and texturing and, and lighting the scene, and then you will export it to, uh, to Unity 3D, as you may be very familiar with in this gaming uh, environment. Uh, it's a fantastic tool for designing computer games. And you just uh, export it from 3 Studio Max as an FBX, take it into G Unity, and then you will do the last works in the scene in Unity, where you will uh, set up the materials again, may maybe put in some functionality, uh, and you can uh, also add in, uh, to make the stereo effect, you will uh, need a stereo package for Unity that you will uh, uh, import into Unity and set up the scene so you can get the split screen effect. Uh, then you have to put up the right uh, export uh, 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 adjustments for uh, for Android and uh, and uh, export it as an APK for Android and, and install it on your telephone. Uh, uh, something I'm going to uh, mention here uh, first is that you need to do this. You need Android SDK installed on your computer, and you need also a Java development kit uh, because Unity will communicate with. Um, with uh, the Android SDK, and I will show you also that later on. So I will uh, just start and show you how it's uh, it's working. Okay, and it's uh, as, I, as it says in the slides, it's uh, when it comes to light picking, it's two two ways. Uh, one of the things that you need to do is decide uh, where you put your most amount of work. So you can put m most work uh, in 3D in a 3D software package, or you could also do halfway through the 3D software package and the rest in Unity. Uh, in this case, I will show you how I do it in most of the things in the 3D package and uh, put up the rest in Unity. Okay. Okay. So uh, when you are designing for a mobile, it's uh, it's uh, the normal normal rules for game development that will be uh, be uh, you have to follow here, and that means uh, keep down the polygons of your 3D scene. Uh, since it's, uh, uh, yeah, you have to keep, keep down the poly count because it's real time and you don't want it to lag. Uh, you would uh, try to 
solve your texture use uh, with atlases. I will go into what atlases is and keep uh, the amount of materials in use down because you have a limited, uh, the, 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 a cell phone is a limited uh, computer. And also keep down the, the amount of models you're using in a scene. And that means that you can attach mo the most important for optimizing a 3D scene for, uh, for uh, virtual reality would be to attach uh, models uh, into one. Uh, and I will explain why uh, later. Uh, some like thumb rules. This is really when you come to like numbers of for optimization for uh, for uh, cell phones, and um, you can have a thumb rule, and that will be only a rule that lasts maybe this year and next year. They have uh, come with another telephone that is super duper that will uh, kick out these numbers uh, easily. But let's say 50,000 polygons. If you can keep it down to 50,000 polygons currently, that would be quite good. And uh, the normal rules for creating uh, computer games is um, uh, to take away uh, uh, things that you are n don't need to have in your scene. Uh, take away backsides, undersides in your uh, scene, both to, uh, to uh, keep the polygons uh, down, but most important to uh, don't use more texture space than you need. So, uh, yeah, and, uh, and again, uh, use texture atlases to, uh, to uh, in order to, you can, with a texture atlas, you, you can use one material to color many models at the same time. And, uh, and that will be very optimizing. So here's an example of a, example of a texture atlas. And here you can see this is a wall spaces into a 3D room. And you can see here uh, that uh, uh, this is uh, walls and floors and different other things have uh, different materials that you can uh, then add to, uh, to your scene and, uh, and they will uh, use very little, the, the whole texture space is used. It's very little that goes, uh, that is, um, uh, it's not used here. What you also can see in this uh, texture atlas is uh, that all the light information in the scene is rendered into the texture. So this is a floor space and here you will see uh, for example, the shadows uh, from the models uh, on the floor. Okay. Oops, one back. So this uh, this brings me over to light and text and light and uh, and uh, shadows. Uh, this is uh, extremely important to for a virtual for for cell phones for a virtual uh, uh, experience you really want this to go very fast because if it's lagging, it's really uh, horrible for experience. And then you c if you then have a lot of lights in your scene, uh, in the Unity scene, it will, be, uh, the, it will uh, keep up a lot of resources. So therefore, the best is to render all light and shadow in information into the textures. So you don't basically don't need lights at all. You just use the textures. Uh, this calls light peaking. Uh, and you can do it uh, in most 3D softwares. And uh, I will show you in a while how we put up a light baking in 3D Studio Max. Uh, as I said, you can do this also in Unity, but then you have a different workflow. So you can light bake the complete scene also in Unity. But uh, I will not show that now because it's a, a bit too, uh, too time consuming and uh, the result will be more or less the same. Okay. I can. Um, go over to the design of the scene. Uh, here. Okay, so this is a, this is a 3D scene um, from uh, one of my students uh, in uh, Westerdals, at the 3D graphics students. Um, sh she has made this uh, apartment space. As you can see, uh, you can see through the space now because the, the, the important uh, things with this scene is, is what you... Um, what you see from the inside, you will never be on the outside of this. So, when you look through it, you can see uh, the whole. It's a living room here. It's a balcony here, and it's a bed, uh, like a sleeping room here. And we are going to make this uh, to uh, get this over to the uh, to a mobile uh, VR experience. Okay. First of all, you can see here uh, on some of these objects. Uh, there are textures and there are rendered uh, lights into them. For example, here you will see that 
some reflections are rendered into this uh, refrigerator. Uh, you have uh, a bit of depth in this uh, furnitures and stuff. And look here, she has been very, uh, Solve is her name, she's uh, been very caring with taking away, taking away like backside. So look at this uh, sofa area. She has taken away the backside because she don't want to use texture space for the backside. That's unnecessary. So it's uh, uh, a good way to optimize and you can, uh, when she textures this sofa, then it will be uh, maximum use of the texture space instead of important areas. So uh, she has also uh, kept uh, the polygon count uh, quite down, but you can see here uh, the total is uh, 24,000 polygons in the complete scene. Uh, she has uh, here she uh, has some more polygons in the pillows and uh, in forms that are a bit more organic, simple forms in walls. Uh, simple uh, geometry in the walls and uh, and she has also been uh, very uh, uh, which are caring with uh, uh, this textures uh, texture atlases which I will also uh, show you uh, yeah you can see uh, also uh, for example this sofa is connected with so this sofa here is uh, if I put it up like this, you'll see that this sofa is one model. So she have attached uh, the sofa, the pillows, the table, everything. She's attached into one model, and the reason uh, why she has done that is that when you are uh, doing this for real time, if it's a static object that you don't need to be, uh, if it was a game and you should pick up the copper, you couldn't do it. But uh, since this is a static scene, uh, Unity will uh, Unity will. Um, uh, think of this more or less one instead of all this difference and uh, you will reduce the amount of uh, uh, processor uh, power to uh, to process and draw this scene okay you can see uh, she has also uh, put up the lights in this scene and this is done by a uh, uh, quite nice rendering engine it's called we ray do you know about that have you heard about that yeah it's a beautiful uh, uh, software which can um, uh, yeah, you, you can uh, make really like fo photorealistic uh, lights and shadows and uh, reflections and stuff with this. And she has put up uh, lights uh, for the whole scene here. So you can see this is the lights from the, from the ceiling and from, uh, from the windows and uh, here from this lamp here. And putting this up to um, render this to a texture, I will now just demonstrate how you do that. You use this uh, tool in 3 Studio Max it's called... Uh, Strangely enough, it's called render to texture. So uh, you have it here. So I just uh, pick up my model, and I will. Uh, it, it needs a bit of uh, thinking, uh, and I also need to start WeRay. Uh, it will be just put up a, a path for your uh, path for your um, for your uh, texture. I put it in my the gathering map here. Okay. Then I just add what kind of texture I want to render out because I could render out just the shadows, I could render out just the reflections, I could render out just the, the light. But in this case, I want to render out a complete map of the whole of the whole scene. So I'll go to the Wii Ray. Uh, in uh, this is different from each uh, render, but uh, if you are using the default Max render, you will use just a complete map here. But uh, since I'm using Wii Ray, I'm using uh, the Wii Ray complete map. Where do we have that one? Here. So, okay, and uh, here uh, um, you can also name your texture, and you can put a. Um, you can you now it's uh, will be saved as a target image, but I want it to be a GPG. Okay. Okay, and uh, you can set the size of the texture. Uh, for this demonstration, I can just put it up to like 1024. I would normally do it m much higher. Uh, it's, it's very good to render out your textures very high. So if you render them out like 4096, it's much better because it's uh, easier to uh, take that texture down and uh, reduce the size of it and, uh, in Unity uh, instead of uh, going backwards and render it again. Okay. And then you just hit render. And you say yes, and it will start. Uh, I will not show you the whole process. I have cheated a bit, but here you can see it starts to render, render the um, 
the floors and ceiling and um, and uh, the different materials in the in the scene. Okay. So I cancel the render. <coughs> Since I've cheated a bit, I have this texture f finished here. I'll just uh, add the finished texture to the scene. And uh, now you can see it. You have the light information on the floor. You have uh, light on the wall here from this lamp. You have the, also the textures on the balcony and so on. OK. So far, so good. What we, what we are going to do now is to, what you, let's say you are finished with your scene. Oops. <laughs> what happened here? Ah, thank you, Trees to Max. Uh, one moment. Okay. Some crashes. It's not uh, very uncommon with 3D Studio Max. Uh, so. Okay, so let's see that you are finished with your scene. You can put on the material back in. Um. What you actually don't need now is the lights, uh, because you have rendered all the all the light information into the lights. So you can just uh, take away the lights. So I will just find all the, lamp, the lights in the scene. And I will just uh, take all the lights, delete the lights, because I don't need them anymore. And then I will go to export. And I will export uh, the complete scene to Unity. And I will use the, the uh, FBX exporter. OK, so and the FBX uh, have some uh, pre-definitions, but um, the current presence is for uh, Mudbox. I can just use the Autodesk Media and Entertainment and uh, export it. Give some, um, uh, some warnings, but uh, in this case, it's not so, so, uh, so uh, uh, crucial. OK. When you are finished in uh, 3D Studio Max, uh, <coughs> when you're finished in 3D Studio Max and exported as seen to Unity, it's some kind, of, some things you have to be, uh, uh, take care of in Unity, and. Uh, First of all, uh, mm. first of all, uh, you have to consider the draw calls in Unity. Draw calls is uh, when the screen card of your computer or telephone uh, gets a message from uh, fr from the application uh, to do something, to draw something, is a draw call, and obviously you want your draw calls to be as low as possible because. If you have a really high amount of draw calls, uh, uh, it might start lag. And that you can see that also in, in normal computer games. So to keep down the draw calls, again, the optimization process is to keep uh, as few models as possible, attach your models, use as few materials as possible, and don't use lights in Unity uh, unless you have to. Of course, you have to use lights in Unity when you're making computer games. but. Uh, for this, yeah, we have rendered all the light information, so we will have a minimum of draw calls. So, uh, materials shining on uh, models will... Uh, no, uh, lights shining on uh, models with materials in Unity will add up the amount of draw calls. I will show you how you can see this. Uh, okay. The... Next, you have to do in Unity, since you are not having light, your materials will have to be self-illuminated. So they, they, they be self-reflective. So we will put up the scene with self-reflective materials in Unity, 
and we will also add a stereo, virtual stereo camera into the scene to uh, get a stereo effect. And in the end, you can put up a little script. I have a little script here, uh, which uh, does that you can move, your ca that the camera will jump around in the, uh, in the scene on time. Of course, uh, you can uh, do what, what kind of script you want. If you're a good C-sharp scripter, you can make a movement with it. For example, with if you just tilt the camera, you will move forward, for example, or yeah. There's a lot of uh, scripts also out there so you can use. Okay, uh, I will uh, show you how it looks in Unity. So this is the same scene in Unity. And I have uh, deliberately uh, put up, um, I haven't put in the last material which I rendered to texture, which I have here in the, in the files. But if you go now to, um, to, I put in a camera, just a normal camera in Unity. Uh, and if you look at it, you will see why um, we want it to be self-illuminated. So here's the scene. And you can see the geometry uh, is just gray. And you will see all the, you will see all the furniture which has self-illuminated textures and have um, uh, put up right in the scene. They will come through really nice, but the last texture is not here. So we're going to put that in. So we just uh, click on the um, on the scene, and we will add the texture. Uh, that is the living room there, like this. And if you go back to uh, now, it's still very dark. So we will use a mobile shader. So we'll go to um, mobile and use the unlit shader. And now the scene is really nice, like this. So here you can look around in the scene. Looks really, really nice. Okay. Okay, the, n the next thing you need would be uh, the stereo camera. And I will just delete the camera I have in the scene because I don't need it anymore. Uh, the stereo camera uh, you have to download from uh, either from Google. Google Cal Cardboard has a site with a Google stereo camera, which is a Unity SDK, which you can just import into Unity. But you have also another uh, another one that's called Dive, and it's the Dive I'm going to use now. I have the list of all the resources in the end, so you can uh, take a picture of the of the screen and get what you need. So uh, we'll just uh, import uh, the Dive uh, Dive Unity package, custom package, and here's the Dive pl plugin. I will just uh, import that. This is super easy. So here is the dive folder, and it has a prefab, so we can just. <laughs> okay, so I just uh, grabbed the dive camera into the scene, and here you can see it in the scene. And here, so if I now use the use the play mode, you will see now I have a split screen, and this will this is what's going to be. Uh, on the on your cell phone, and you can with a Google Cardboard just split the screen through the, these two lenses. So, so far so good. But what I can do now is just to put up a little script, which I can, for example, if I put one camera here, in this this part of the apartment, uh, it was a bit low. I think I should put it up like this something. This is better. Uh, it's a, a bit close to the fridge, uh, something like this. And I can uh, look around from here in this little hallway, and I can look up and uh, like this. OK. Then I have a little script, the move script. And it looks like this. It's just it's a very, very small little script. And it just uh, puts, uh, you can put up a timer. And you can see, say to the timer that uh, when, uh, when it reaches a certain number, let's say five seconds, it will just move to another location. And you can set the new location. In this, uh, in this case, you would maybe put one location into the bedroom and one in the, in the living room, and then it will swap. It's just a way to be able to see the whole apartment. So uh, I'll just uh, add the script to... Um, add a script to uh, my camera. And here you see you can uh, 
put in the positions. So I would, uh, time to move, I would say like five seconds just for showing. And we can have two positions, not 20, two. And we'll just put in the X, Y, Z set, set, uh, coordinates for the camera. So I can put up the camera here. The first position is where the camera stands now. And uh, it's here. And here. So I just copy the position of the camera now, like this. And if I if I go through the let's say if I just I can just put the camera in here and see if uh, yeah it's just a set position that is moved okay so I can uh, take this one to here copy this one set and I'll put the set position here and the same position here. And oh, sorry. Here. And then we can test it. So now the camera should move in five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it moved. OK. Just a very simple ex uh, sample of functionality. OK. <coughs> Uh, let's say the, the, the scene is ready to be exported to the Android telephone. Uh, we are uh, really satisfied what we, what we have done, and, uh, and uh, now it's time to export it. First of all, you need, uh, as I told you, you need uh, the Android uh, SDK. And that is because when we are building out to Unity, it's a couple of important things here. You have the build settings. And I will go to player settings here. And here, uh, we have to put up some things. And as you can see here, uh, one of the most important uh, here is what kind of uh, API level uh, it exports for. So here you can put up like old Android. So if you, you can export it for a uh, very old Android version or a new version. But the thing to, to be able to export it, you need uh, to have the correct API level installed in your Android SDK. And the Android SDK installed is uh, here in, um, I will find it here, Android SDK Manager. And I will just put it up. And here you can see uh, the Android SDK, and it comes up with a lot of messages. But here you can see I have installed for my uh, Android, I have uh, installed uh, Android uh, 4.0. So you can see here it's installed. So you have to, uh, if your uh, Android SDK is completely free, but you have to, uh, you have to uh, download and install um, uh, the right API level for what you want to export to. And in the end, you also have to uh, be sure that the Google USB driver is installed. And you have that uh, in top here, don't we? Let's see. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Ah, here it is. The Google S USB driver must be also be installed. And that is because uh, you can, from Unity, you can, uh, you can uh, just make a build and run commando so that it will send it to the telephone and install it directly to your telephone. But uh, then you need a USB drive to communicate with the telephone. OK. So putting up the correct API level, and that is, uh, I will put that up here. I'll set that to 4 because I have installed it. Ice cream sandwich. And then the next is you need a company name. And I will uh, call this um, after the one that has made it, Solvay, the surname. Solvay's uh, company. And the product name is um, Apartment uh, v, uh, VR, let's call it. And you can use this uh, later on also. I will show you. Here you can also put a di uh, an icon for your scene. I don't currently have a really nice icon, but here you can put on your, your own icon. Resolution and presentation here, I put this to auto-rotation. So that it means that the auto-rotation function in the telephone is, is, uh, is uh, it will make it uh, auto-rotate if uh, any kind of way you hold your telephone. OK. Then the last thing here in the published settings are, no, in the other settings are here, the bundle identifier. You form this like a, 
like a like a com address, and I will just use um, uh, this here. Yeah, and I uh, forgot to mention uh, that the product name will also be the name of the app on the telephone. So I'll uh, put that in also in the bundle identifier. And as long as you have this, the scene with this identifier here, you can, uh, every time you make a new scene, you will um, write over the, the old scene on the telephone. So if you have the same address. And that's it. OK, so we can build. And I will uh, apartment VR here, apartment VR. And uh, Unity will uh, use some time to build the scene. And now I can uh, connect my telephone. I don't need V-Ray anymore, so I can take off the dongle. So, and here it is. Here is the APK file. I have the telephone here open. And as I said, you can make a build and run from Unity also, but I prefer just to uh, I just prefer to uh, drop it uh, into the download fo folder on the on the Android phone, Apartment VR, and I can now install it to my phone. So uh, let's see here: device storage, download. Yep, install. Open. And here are it. And of course, to look even smaller. Oh, okay. I can put it into my Woohoo. So Okay. Uh, you can try it afterwards. Uh, here is, um, I will put up the slides and I will also translate them in English. I was uh, not aware that I was going to hold it in English. So I will put up the slides in English also uh, for a site here at uh, the gathering. Uh, here's the resources. Uh, I will just keep them up for a while. This will also be in the slides. And uh, the little script, the move script, that um, I will put that also out so you can use that. Uh, we have also some of these scenes uh, are able to, you can download it and test it. And if you want to develop for uh, Google Cardboard, we have a lot of cardboards here. So you can have a cardboard from me if you want. Okay, thanks. Are there any questions? Okay. Thank you. So you can come up here and we can uh, have a little thing here. You can uh, try the try the cardboard and have a cardboard if you want. Yeah.